If you grew up in the 80s like I did, a typical doomsday scenario was something like... We have a launch detection. We have a Soviet launch detection. Bemuse confirmed a massive attack. Well, luckily this never happened, but what if it actually happens, but nobody recognizes it? <laughs> This is a map of the actual attacks that happened this morning. So we don't talk about a theoretical concept. We talk about actual attacks taking place. It's only 1 p.m. and this is roughly hitting 400,000 attacks worldwide. So people think the others are affected, but everyone is affected. Companies, your family accounts, your personal data. And keep in mind, 93% of the money is digital. So I'm quite black and white with my opinion. There are two types of companies. The one company that does not care too much about cybersecurity at all. The other side cares too much about security to an extent of the exclusion of innovation, which is a real problem because usually it's old infrastructure that is affected. There are too many threats to cover all of them in just one video. So what I want to do today is give you the basics of what you need to make a decision of this is what I want for my company or completely different direction and of course I always share what we use in our company and partners that we work with and I'm happy to hear about what your opinion and learnings are so please leave a comment on that. Okay let's build a common understanding. There are only very very few hacks that are targeted to a specific company or want to get certain pieces of information. Most of the hacks you will read about are very spread out and what they do is they send out kind of a virus that affect the system. You most likely don't deal with the black hacker sitting in kind of a basement and then hacking your system. It's much more likely you deal with organized crime, make money with hacking. Sometimes affect critical infrastructure, but most of the times make money with it. So let's take the example of WannaCry. WannaCry was the one that most of the companies have heard of. And a couple of weeks ago, a similar virus using the same mechanics affected a lot of global companies. The health service will point out that it's just one of many organizations around the world affected by this attack. Russia, the United States and many points in between have been hit by what's now a common form of cyber crime. People within a company receive an email. Usually it's the managing director or the HR department because it's much easier to send them an email with a threat because they receive a lot of emails. So it's easier to hide it within all the different emails they receive. The moment they click on a link or the attachment, the program starts working. It starts to affect the actual hard drive, for example. In this case, it encrypted the hard drive and it even prevented the computer from rebooting. You get a message and it says, please pay, I think it was 600 Bitcoin or 300 Bitcoin, and then we release your computer. So technically you cannot work. And this is what it's all about. Are you able to keep on working and do your usual business or are you then locked off from everything you usually do? The second thing that is important are the different phases. There are three phases, prevention, Detection, reaction. The only thing you can do if you're not an IT provider, if you're not a company that has IT as the backbone or a cybersecurity company, you should care about the prevention in modern infrastructure. So what can you do to prevent your infrastructure from being attacked? Looking at just the prevention part, we talk about usually number one, cloud. Why is cloud prevention? Well. What the cloud does is you outsource the cybersecurity to a team by, let's say, Microsoft or Google. So people who have to deal with that 24-7, 365 days in a row, they are much more likely to have a strong security backbone. And second thing is, if you work in the cloud, it's a program that is continuously updated. Often computers and devices are affected that are not updated. This is something you then also outsource. Number two, training. If you don't train your people with the basics of cybersecurity, let's say with an onboarding training and then an ongoing thing, what can happen in a way that people understand this is important, it won't help because it's still the people who click on a certain link. Take the example of traveling to a unstable or insecure area of the planet where you also receive a training. You will not laugh. You will not cry. You will learn by the number of what to do and what not to do. But if people travel to cyber land, they somehow think everything is fine and this cannot happen. And number three is then extra security. Why extra security if you go in the cloud? The cloud itself does not prevent you from attacks. So what we use is an extra service that we put in front of our cloud, something like FireEye or Silence. FireEye, for example, you can imagine like a cloud in front of your cloud, 
like a big cloud. It sets up like three environments, Windows, Mac, Linux, and then tests what the threat does to the system. This happens in moments. It's a very simple explanation, but this is how it works. These tools are also capable of detecting a threat that is already in the system and then isolating the threat on the one computer that is affected in order to prevent the threat from spreading out to your whole company. If you really need stuff on your hardware and you cannot make the choice of like we do having everything in the cloud because the cloud is much more rarely affected than devices then you should definitely consider having these tools. So this is how we work. We have everything in the cloud, nothing on the computer except for like huge files that we cannot put in the cloud and then using an extra security layer and train the people to the basics so that they know what things like spoofing, phishing, whaling are. Very, very simple. This is my five cents about cybersecurity and I know there is much, much more to that, but that's just a basic thought. So I'm happy to hear your thoughts. So leave some comments and let us know what you think. Thanks for watching and I see you next week.